Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Richie Valentine here. Uh, today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of a pair of earrings that I bought. I bought a pair of certified D color VVS1 Moissanite stud solitaire earrings. And the reason why I went with Moissanite is because you get the shine, the sparkle of a really nice diamond, but you're paying a fraction of the cost. Reason being is most night is a lab grown diamond as opposed to one that occurs in nature, which costs a lot of money due to the labor that is required to retrieve them. So um, let's go ahead and open it up and see what it looks like and whether or not uh, it has enough uh, shine and sparkle as one would imagine. Here we go. So the two that I got are seven millimeter earrings. And a lot of people in the comments were saying five is too small. Six might feel a little bit too small. And if I've learned anything from my gold chains, try to get something a bit bigger if you can. So that's what I did. I went with the seven. I think they can go as high as like eight millimeters or something, but I thought seven was... It looked pretty nice um, in the photos anyway, but we know how that goes. So a little bit of information and certificate of authenticity for the Mosinite diamond. And there's some information there. And I guess if you have a diamond reader, these Mosinite diamonds do test as, um, as diamonds when you use the little meter. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those. But if you look up on YouTube, I'm sure you'll find a few videos of people doing that. So here it is. Comes in a nice basic little box. Let's go ahead and open it up. I'm going to face it towards you guys. Will you marry me? Ooh. See, this isn't even facing me right now. This is all you guys. Man. Wow, you know what? These, even seven millimeters looks kind of small. It may look really big on camera, but I mean, it'll probably look fine when I put them on, but I'm kind of glad I went with these rather than anything smaller. I would imagine a five millimeter would look microscopic, but look at that. I went with the gold plated earrings uh, to kind of mesh with my gold chains a bit. In the past with my earring choices, I would get of sort of silver backing and I decided to do something a little bit different this time around uh, that is sparkly isn't it anyway let's go ahead and put these on let's see if we can do another close-up there we go Ooh, that looks nice can you guys see that sparkle all right, so these are twist-on backings. This one looks just a little bit bent. I don't know if you guys can see that. Anyway, I think there's too much finger action up on the, the camera here. Anyway, the backing looks slightly bent, but the earring itself looks okay. So let's go ahead and put them in. I was watching a few of these reviews before I bought them. And I'm surprised not a lot of people were actually putting them on, trying them on, and showing the camera what it looks like, which is I thought was weird. But anyway, I'm going to do it for y'all. Oh, 
I was never really a big fan of gold plated earrings before, but I think ever since getting gold chains, uh, you know, gold just looks a little bit better. Not necessarily better, it's just with what I'm working with, the gold mat, uh, meshes with each other. Alright, so I'm getting the backing in now. Takes several, several turns. I think we're getting there. There. Okay, actually, not too bad. Not too massive, but certainly noticeable. I think I think it looks proportionate. You can see it from a distance. Um, and I got kind of a big earlobe, so it fills out nicely. But that's just one side. Uh, so I'm going to get the other side on and see what it looks like. Show you guys the backing. And this one is... See if it's straight or bent. This one looks a bit straighter. Maybe slightly bent. Got it in. Let's go ahead and put the backing on. And you got to twist a bunch with these. They give you a lot of room to play with. So it's probably to accommodate all those different kinds of earlobes. Some are meatier than others. Okay, I felt a little bit of resistance, so I just backed it up a little bit. But that's what it looks like in the right ear. Go ahead and bring that in. Left ear. Maybe you can see a bit of both. Okay. You know what, guys? I think I'm liking them. Yeah, I think uh, seven millimeters was a good choice. Um, it it happens to go well with my the shape of my earlobes. So if you guys got maybe smaller earlobes, you might go down a size like six millimeters or depending on what kind of style you, you, you like rocking. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Sparkly? Looking good? What you think? Anyway, um, let me read you guys some information on most night diamonds compared to real diamonds real quick. All right. Uh, mining free. Mosinite is lab created with minimal environmental impact. Value. Mosinite is less expensive per carat than many other gemstones. Durability. Mosinite gemstones are 9.25 on the Mohs scale of hardness. So they are suitable for everyday wear, which is what I want, right? I want them to bang around a little bit and not be too worried about it. Um, I guess the Mosinite diamond was discovered by a French scientist named Henry Mosin in 1893, and he won the Nobel Peace Prize in chemistry. Durability. Uh, gemstones are measured on the Mohs scale of hardness, which assesses a gem's ability to withstand surface scratching. Good. I want my stuff to be little robust. On the most scale, most tonight gemstones are 9.25, so they are suitable for daily wear. I said that already. Diamonds are the hardest known mineral and receive a 10 on the most scale of hardness. So we're just off by 0.75 on the hardness scale. Not bad for a lab-grown diamond. Um, and at a fraction of the cost Brilliance. Brilliance refers to the appearance of light reflected from the interior of the gem. Most knights exhibit a different kind of brilliance than diamonds do. 
as their f faceting pattern is different. The fiery rainbow flashes emitted by the most knights are beloved by some, but others feel most knights' heightened brilliance can create a disco ball effect. That bling I'm talking about. Especially in sunlight. The bigger the most knight, the more likely it is the difference will be noticeable. Most nights has a reflect, refractive index of 2.65 to 2.69, which is higher than a natural diamond. Okay. Moving on to the diamond. A different type of brilliance is what makes it possible to distinguish a most night from a diamond. Diamonds reflect light in three different ways. The white light reflected back is referred to as brilliance, while the rainbow colors of the refracted through the diamond referred to as dispersion. The surface sparkle of a diamond, no, known as scintillation, that's a new word, is a third type of diamond light return. The combination of these three give diamonds their famous sparkle. Okay. Color. Color is the natural or lack of color visible within a gemstone. With most knights, most knights are labeled as colorless. The gems can still project a yellow or grayish hue in certain lights. Here again, the larger the most knight, the more noticeable the color. For diamonds, a colorless diamond, whether neutral or lab created, has a natural body color that contains no traces of yellow, brown, or gray, resulting in a dazzling bright white appearance. Price, the Mohs Knight. For the same size from the top view, Mohs Knights are dramatically lower in pricing than diamonds of that size. Mohs Knight gems typically vary in price based on size and whether the stone is premium or super premium. These look all right, man. These look premium. Diamonds. Natural diamonds and lab-created diamonds prices based on shape, carat, cut, color, and clarity. Lab-created diamonds are more affordable than natural diamonds. Yeah. Sourcing. Because most nights are lab-created, they are an appealing option for those seeking an eco-conscious gemstone as they require no mining. Part of the reason why I got mine. And plus, it's not that expensive, let's be real. Diamonds. We go above and beyond the current industry standards to offer both beyond conflict-free diamonds that have been selected for their ethical and environmentally responsible origins, as well as lab-created diamonds that are ethically grown with minimal environmental impact. So, yeah, that was a quick summary of the differences between most night diamonds and diamonds you find in nature or lab grown diamonds as well but anyway guys i just want to buy these diamond earrings so that they can you know i can mix up my wardrobe and just styling a little bit and i think they look pretty cool um the backing is hardly noticeable you kind of have to bend your ear back you know I don't know if it makes that much of a difference where, whether it's gold plated or not, but there you have it, folks. Most of night earrings, seven millimeter. Let me know what you guys think. Hit that like button, subscribe if you want. Coming up next or very, very soon is a gold chain cleaning video. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you in the next one.